name is Anna Schmidt. I am a house healer, a spirit clearer, and a psychic development teacher. Today we're going to talk about why objects hold energy, how it gets there, and what you can do to remove it from items within your home. So if you like what I talk about today, please feel free to subscribe, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any objects in your home that you think may be holding energy. So what is this energy? Where does it come from? The energy that is imprinted in objects is most often emotions. So emotions from the people who have previously owned the items. It can also be energy that is imprinted uh, subconsciously or consciously onto items. So those that use black magic curses spells can actually curse items and then give them to people to cause disruptions in their life. Sometimes spirits, people that have passed, that haven't left the earth realm, can still be attached to the items within their home because of an emotional attachment. You know, they loved their home, they loved the things that were in their home, and they're not quite ready to let go of them yet and actually move on to the other side. This is where my work as a house healer and a spirit clearer, I go in and I talk to these energies, just like I would talk to my mum or my dad or my grandma. We have a conversation about why they're still attached to them. Do they actually realise that they have passed away? This is quite often a point with energies that are attached to objects is they're like, no, I'm still here. I'm still living in my home. And I explain to them very gently and very kindly that they are not living in their physical bodies anymore. Once they understand that this is the case and that they can actually move on to the other side, quite often they will go quite easily. Other times we talk about what their attachment is to the item. An example is, uh, a man moved into a house in the state where I live and he messaged me and goes, this house just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. And his family bought it for him, thinking it would be lovely for him to have. In the back room, when he showed me photos, in the back room of this house were all of the possessions of the lady who had previously lived there. Her personal possessions, like her dressing table, her sewing machine, all of her other personal type items, she was there. I saw her standing in the doorway and I'm like, hello, we had the conversation. And she wasn't happy that this man actually had her items in her house. She was okay that he was living there, but she's like, no, no, he can't. He can't come near my things. He can't come near my things. So I had a conversation with this energy helped her to understand the process of moving on and letting go of things to the past. She wanted some of her items to actually go to her family members. So I talked to the man who was living in the home and he went, yeah, I can do that. I've got their contact numbers. They had the conversation. They came and collected the things that she wanted to pass on because she had passed away before she had a chance to say, I would like my son to have this. I would like my daughter to have this. So she was still attached to those items through grief and not understanding that these items were still there. Why was this man in her house? So quite often talking to spirits helps them to understand what is happening to them. So other things that can attach energies to items are, like I talked about before, black magic, curses and spells. You've only got to pick up an item, put in a really detrimental thought. If you give that item to another person, that item has been imprinted with what you were thinking as you pass it to them. Now, this imprint can stay there for days, months, weeks, years. Like a pendant that I bought that belonged to an elderly lady, and I didn't know this. I just assumed this was a pendant that had, it was a new pendant. This is what I assumed. When I put it on, I felt really unwell. It was a beautiful lapis lazuli and it had all the lovely wiring and things around it. And I felt really, really unwell. When I contacted the man who sold it through eBay, he said, oh yeah, that was my mum's. She was really attached to that and she didn't like anyone touching it. So by me putting that pendant on, she was like 
no, no, I don't like you wearing that. So what I did is I had a conversation with the lady. He didn't give me her name, but I had her pendant and I held it in my hands and I talked to her and I said to her how much I really love this pendant and I would appreciate if she would let me wear it. Within two or three days, the energy of the pendant changed and I wore that pendant for years and years and years and years until it literally disappeared from my bedroom. Don't know where it went. I haven't seen it since. So other things that can hold energy are natural items such as wood, wood from buildings. So if there has been a building somewhere where there has been some sort of uh, detrimental behaviour, where there's been um, murders or some sort of disruptive behaviour, the house is pulled apart, the wood is sold off uh, to other people to build their home with, sometimes the energy can be imprinted. So what has happened in the situations in that home or in that building can transfer in the fabric of the building, in the window frames, in the wood that comes into the house. So you've got a perfectly beautiful piece of land. If you build a floor out of detrimental wood where something has happened, some sort of trauma has happened, that trauma can come up into the building and change the energy of how your home feels. This is where house healers come in. This is the sort of work we do is we tune in, we can go to the place or we can do it long distance. Most of the time we work long distance around the world, just with the permission of the owner. If you have permission, the address, a photo and a floor plan, we can tune into the home and go, yep, the land quite often speaks to me and says, yep, I don't like that building. There's something not right about it. And it'll actually show me the place within the floor plan where the detrimental energy is. And I will go in, work out what the trauma was or the emotional attachment or the spirits that have come with the wood, because sometimes that happens as well. Once you clear those energies, the home will go back to normal and the wood will be absolutely okay to be there. Another example is when you buy secondhand objects. We all love to go op shopping. I think of it as a treasure hunt. I love finding things in op shops or secondhand shops. A friend of mine bought home a lovely chest of drawers from a secondhand shop. Beautiful chest of drawers. When it came into her house, no one could sleep. The bottom drawer would stay open all the time. She would close the bottom drawer it would open again and she messaged me and went there's something wrong with these chest of drawers I just don't know what it is and I went there and I actually laid my hands on them it was really interesting I had my hand on the top and I was rubbing the side of these chest of drawers I don't know why and as I was doing this I was starting to feel sicker and sicker and sicker there had been a dark energy that had imprinted itself onto that chest of drawers to travel around and get into people's homes. When I realised that, when it realised that I saw it, it saw me, it got quite nasty and uh, management, God source creator energy came in and helped me to clear that chest of drawers. Another example is a nappy table that a client bought. I did a house clearing for her. It was fine for a few days and then she said, look, my child just won't lay on this nappy table. And I said to her, you know, was it secondhand? Did someone give it to you? Oh yeah, a lady gave it to me. She didn't tell me that initially, but that's okay. So when I tuned in to the nappy table, she actually sent me a photo of it. When I looked at it, because I pick up on the energy of things just looking through photos, people and items. I looked at this item and I went, oh, oh, I can see what's moving around in it. Something had happened on the top of that nappy table. I wasn't given the details. I never asked for the details because it's not my business. Something had happened on the top of that nappy table and detrimental energy had been left in there from the trauma that had happened or the experience that had happened on that nappy table. Other energies that are just wafting around in the universe go, oh, I am vibrating at the same level as that energy that is in that nappy table, the energy's moved in there. When I realized they were there, 
had the conversation with them, removed their attachment to the item. So when you take away their food, there's no reason for them to stay there. Help them to transition to the other side. And the lady messaged me and went, my daughter lays on there now and she's laughing and giggling and she's having a good time and she actually lets me change her nappy without trying to get off the table. The child, children as we know, are very, very uh, open to psychic and spiritual energy. They just feel it. They're naturally attuned when they're very, very young. And this little one was probably about uh, two or two and a half. And she couldn't tell her mum, I don't feel right on this. So she was always trying to escape off this nappy table. And mum messaged me and went, it's actually a joy to use this table now. And she said, the room feels different. People, if they're not trained in understanding how energy works and how rooms can change uh, when there's detrimental energy there, you just don't realise. You, you just go, oh, this is just the way it is. Now, another lady had, oh, I talk about the, the land, the piece of land that I went on to. There's a piece of land in southern Tasmania where there is a, a car park and a supermarket. And I would go there occasionally. I'd be perfectly fine up here until I got to this car park. And I would drive into the car park and all of a sudden I'd lose the plot. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't work how to park. I couldn't remember what my shopping was that I needed to get. And I'm like, this isn't right. There's something about this land that is not right. So I asked Universal Energy, do I have permission to tune into this piece of land and when I tuned in I saw all sorts of things that have happened on this land and I asked permission from the land do I have permission to clear the detrimental energy that's here and it was like this big wave of grief and wave of sorrow that came forward and it was like yes please can you please clear the energy that is here now, I did this over a period of probably about two weeks. It was on and off when I worked on it. I went back there a month later and I drove into the car park quite sensibly, found a parking spot, remembered what I needed to get from my shopping, and I could actually walk on the land without feeling wobbly and unsteady because quite often our bodies can be used like a pendulum. If you get out of your car and walk into a place and it's like, don't feel right, I don't feel right, my head's hurting, this is hurting. You walk out of the place and you feel better again. You know there's some sort of detrimental energy in there that is affecting your energy field. So back to the car park. So the car park is absolutely fine now. I've had people message me that didn't know I did work there, but lived there and I kind of go and visit them. And they went, oh, I just drove into this certain car park the other day. Gee, it feels good. I actually enjoy going there now. People don't realise how their energy fields are affected by energetic imprints from the land and from objects. So how do you clear this energy? You can employ people like myself to come in and do like a mini or a full clearing or to do a spiritual clearing. Or there are some things that you can do yourself. I'm going to digress here slightly. A lady messaged me, but it's relevant. It's relevant. A lady messaged me about this beautiful vase that her daughter had given her. It was a golden angel vase and she'd put it on her mantelpiece. As soon as she put it on the mantelpiece, the dog wouldn't go in the lounge room. The husband's like, oh, I'm not comfortable. I don't like this. There's something weird going on here. What is going on? He couldn't pick it up. When she sent me a picture of this vase, it was so funny. I could see this little energy had hooked itself onto this vase and it was just sitting there. And it was moderately detrimental. It wasn't anything like really, really nasty. But it had upset the energy of the room. The children wouldn't play near the mantelpiece. Like they used to have a, a play mat in front of the mantelpiece with Legos and different things. Nah, I wouldn't go in the lounge room. The pets and the children would not go in the lounge room. That is definitely a sign there is something that shouldn't be there. When I looked into this vase, it was so, so funny. I looked and I went, I can see something. And then it looked up at me, it went, whoop, and it shot off the vase and took off running around the house. And I said to her, okay, I know what that is. Please put the vase outside in the sun 
for a few days and give it a wash and clean it, I'm going to go and deal with this energy that's roaming around your house. And all I did was I had a conversation with it and it knew it was in the wrong because I'd seen it. It went, oh, I shouldn't be here. Yep, I've been caught and away it went. It was so funny to see. So all I did was help this energy to understand you can't be here. I think it was an elemental being. It was a nature being. So I just assisted it to go outside. I can't remember exactly because it was quite a long time ago. And it was just like, no, 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 I want to be in here. I'm going, but you can't be here. This isn't the place for you. Can you see how your energy is upsetting the family and it's upsetting the home and it's upsetting the pets? And it kind of went, yeah, I suppose. I suppose I should go back outside. And I said to her, where would you like to go? I said, well, I don't want to go out there. I said, would you like to go to the botanical gardens? Lots of trees, flowers, shrubs, beautiful things that you can tend to. And away it went. Quite happily. I just attuned into the botanical gardens here in Hobart and energetically I asked that this, this energy was taken to this place and away it went quite happily. So back to the lady in the vase. So I asked her to take it outside, leave it in the sun for a few days. The sun can quite often clear some levels of detrimental energy. If it's the black magic curses, spells or heavy strong emotions or dark energy, not going to work. Sunlight will work on moderate levels of energy imprints. Also things like um, smudging sage, pal santo, holy water does not remove heavy emotions or dark energy from items or places. I'm just putting that out there. It just doesn't work. You have to get to the core of what the issue is. You have to find the core, talk to the energies, help them to understand and then move them on. So if you realize that the energy in a particular room has changed when you have put in a new item, take that item out, go and put it in another room, do a bit of experimenting to see, is it actually that item that's causing the problem? If it is, take it outside, put it in the sun, open the windows and the curtains, let the air flow through your home. Talk to God Source Creator Energy. Talk to your guides, angels, archangels. Whichever spiritual belief system you follow, you will have beings and helpers that can help you clear energies from your home. The heavy energies, no. You need people like myself and other energy clearers to actually talk to these energies. You've got to find them first because they're quite often hidden or cloaked in items. Like that little energy that was hiding in the gold vase so funny when I saw it. So funny, it looked at me. I'll never forget the look on its face. So sometimes you need help from specialists. Other times you can put things out in the sun. Open the energy of the room by opening the windows, the curtains, the blinds. Playing uplifting music can shift some lower level energy imprints. I have used that in homes. Um, singing bowls, and like the tincture bells, because they create a vibration, changes the vibration of the room. Low level energies that'll work on, the high level dark energies it won't, it just won't. They don't do anything. Clearing products such as sage uh, and pal santo and incense, they create a smoke which doesn't affect the heavier energies. It just doesn't. I've been in homes where people have said, yeah, I've smudged every single room in the house. And I can see the energy standing in the corner like this. They just go, oh, they really think that's going to get rid of me. No, because some energies are attached to emotions. They're attached to the trauma within the fabric of the building. Often around a bit of sage just isn't going to do it. It just isn't going to clear these energies. So talking to your spiritual helpers is big. Use prayer and the power of intent. I used this with a lady um, who wouldn't have me go to her home because her husband didn't believe in this stuff. So I said to her, right, the fabric of her home had an issue. And I explained to her where it was, what she could do about it. Because she wanted to have a play. She wanted to have a part in clearing this energy. She just didn't want me to do it. And that is good because she was actually owning the energy of her home. This is what I was going to work with her on. 
So she and I worked together with me looking at it from a distance and going, okay, this particular part of the house isn't happy or there's a particular thing here that you can work on while I do something else. So I empowered her with intent. She had the intent that she wanted to clear her home of this detrimental energy was there. She was quite frightening. She had pots and pans and she was banging and she was swearing. And I actually saw this particular level of energy. It just went, no, I've had enough of this. I'm going. Off it went. So the power of your own personal intent can clear some levels of energy within objects and within the fabric of the building, depending on what type of energy it is. I think I've just about covered everything today. I've had a bit of a struggle doing this video today. When I talk about these topics, the energies come in like they just they're just hanging around because I do this work all the time. I can seem maybe to you a little bit unsettled or my speech isn't correct or it's just like that woman's just not right today. It's because I have a barrage of people and uh, the higher level energies and sometimes the lower level, level energies are present here because they're wanting help to transition. So if you ever watch any of my videos and you're like, she's just not on the ball today or there's just, I can see something in the background, you absolutely can because they're here with me all the time. They're just wanting help. Most of the energies that I deal with, 99% of them are just wanting to transition to the light, even the dark energies. Even the multiple levels of dark energies, which I'm going to be writing about in a book sometime in 2022. I will hopefully be publishing a book on working with the dark energies. It's a fascinating, fascinating topic. But when you talk about them, when work with them, they're in your home and they just mess with the way that my mind works. Okay, so I'm just going to leave you with that little giggle and just go, yeah, yeah, we can see. We can see she's got this stuff going on. All right, if you like what I do, please feel free to subscribe. There'll be lots, lots, lots more videos. I talk about all sorts of spiritual topics, psychic topics. When I learn new stuff about house healing or spirituality or psychic development, love sharing it with you so that you can learn too. All right, thank you for coming today and I'll see you again soon.